Hello, I want to um, try and explain how the least squares method for regression works. This is um, very widely used all the way across statistics and I've set up um, a simple spreadsheet with a tiny data set which explains in very direct terms how it works. Um, if you look at the left of your screen, um, the data you've got there relates to advertising and sales and um, that's the data I want to look at. So for example, when the advertising is 200, the sales are 8,000, but when the advertising is zero, the sales are only 1,500. The obvious way of looking at this is to draw yourself a scatter diagram like we've got here, and then to draw on a best fit straight line, like the straight line here. Um, this best fit straight line is the regression model, the, which is just um, a model, a mathematical formula for predicting one variable from another. In this case, you can predict sales from advertising spend. So, for example, if the advertising spend is 500, the prediction from the line, if I can get the cursor there, is about 10,000. OK, so that's what we're aiming at. In practice, the two key numbers are these two numbers in the green cells. Um, the, and to show you where these come from, um, because of course the clever bit about the regression is actually working out what these numbers are, I'll start off by putting some wrong answers in here. So put 8,000 in there and 10 in there. If you look back at the um, diagram, you can see that the line has now changed, um, and the line is now quite definitely wrong, but let's um, look at it to see where it comes from. So if we take the first point where advertising is 200, um, the way you work out the um, prediction for the line is you start off with the intercept, which is 8,000, and then add on the slope times the advertising spend, which in this case is 10 for the slope times 200 for the advertising spend makes um, 2,000. So the prediction is 8,000 plus 2,000, which is 10,000. So the prediction for um, 200 about there comes to about 10,000. Just look at one more. Um, if the advertising spend is zero, obviously the slope, the slope times zero comes to zero. So all we've got left is the constant or the intercept, and the prediction will be um, 8,000, which of course is the intercept because that's where the line um, crosses the y-axis where the advertising spend is zero. So that's the way the slope and intercept works. Um, just to sort of show you in a bit more detail, if we change the slope from 10 to 5, um, obviously it sh the slope should become less steep. So if you look at the line, it now becomes a bit less steep. If the slope is 0, the line is now flat. If the slope is negative, the line now becomes um, minus 10. And of course, it's downhill. OK, let's go back to some reasonable numbers. I think a reasonable number would be 4,000 for the intercept and possibly about 20 for the slope. Um, is that the best fit line? Obviously not. The intercept looks a bit high and it looks a bit too steep. But what would be nice would be to um, work out where the best fit line goes automatically. Let's go back to this line, and the prediction now is 8,000. 4,000 for the intercept, plus um, 20 times um, 200, which is 4,000 again, so the prediction is um, 8,000. And as you, and the error now is zero, because the sales are, um, the sales are 8,000, the prediction is 8,000, so the error is zero. That's good news, and you can see that on the diagram because that point is on the line. On the other hand, if we look at the um, next point on the line, the um, advertising here is 100, the intercept is 4,000 again, um, 20 times 100 is 2,000, so the prediction now is 6,000. The error now, because the 
real sales figure is 3,500. The prediction is 6,000, so the error is 2,500. And you can um, see that in... Um, oh no, moved it, sorry, take that back there. You can see that in the... Um, next point, which I think is that one there, the actual is three and a half thousand. The prediction, if I can manage to move that up a bit, is six thousand. So that distance there is the error, which is two thousand five hundred. So obviously, what we want to do is we want to make those errors as small as we can. In practice, um, it's helpful not to use, not to work with the errors, but the square errors. And this is so that big numbers um, get more weight, which, if you think about it, does actually make sense. So the square of zero is zero. The square of two thousand five hundred is six and a quarter million. The next error is a thousand, and the square of that is a million. So these are the these then are the square errors here. I can just. These are the square errors, and the mean of the square errors up there, the so-called mean square error, comes to about 7.5 million. And what we'd obviously like is to make that mean square error a bit lower. And the basic idea of the least squares method is to um, fiddle around with the intercept and the slope so that you make the mean square error as low as it can be. 7.5 million isn't too bad, but we can obviously do a bit better. And fortunately, um, Excel has a little routine built in which does this beautifully. If you click on Data and then Solver, we get this um, this screen here. And what it's trying, the target cell is the mean square error. It's setting it to be a minimum by changing cells D5 to E3 sorry, D3 to E3, which is the green cells there. If we click on Solve and say, yes, we do want to keep it, um, what it's worked out is that the slope should be 17 point something or other, the intercept should be 2,446 point something, and if you put those into the um, formulae, if I can stop this thing playing the fool. Um, what we've got there is that line which does, I hope you'll agree, look like the least look like the best fit. So that's the way least squares work. What we're basically doing is just um, choosing the intercept and the slope to make the mean square error as low as it can be. It started off, I think, just over 7 million. It's now just under 2 million, which is an improvement. And I can assure you, whatever change we make to that, so if we make that 2,500, that the mean square error will go up slightly. It's gone up very slightly, but it has gone up. OK, that's the way um, mean square, the least squares method works. That's about it. I hope that made some 